A very frequent customization request that has come up for this timestamp attendance is a way of getting a timeout. Now, initially I had a system where you would just use a tick box. Now, when you ticked, you got a timeout that was indicated beside it, so you went back and found the person. But um, some people were more interested in having a way of being able to get a barcode out or a timeout that worked in a slightly different way. So I've had a look at a way of being able to do this. Let's just put some more data in here. So we'll grab another couple of names with the current time, as you see, coming in here. So we've got a timestamp. Now, a simple way, if we're not going to have it used here, would be just to get them to scan the name in again. And what happens is you get to see an indication directly that this person has now been a double entry. And we can assume that that's the timeout. If that was not going to be a way that you wanted to work, perhaps it gets a little messy, we could have the information being recorded in a separate spreadsheet. So for example, I've got an out time here. You can see I've got a number here. Uh, for when I have left and it's given me a timeout and I've recorded a time difference. So what we could look at doing here is putting in our entry and we record the timeout. And because we quite often want to be able to compare things, I've got a difference factor here. So I've just used this, this similar function that we have for recording the time. That's no problem. I'm using the VLOOKUP to come from our name list to get our names that are dropping in here. But the different thing here is that I've got a time difference. So I've gone away and I've done a slightly complicated lookup to go back to the original time in and find the entry so it's in the correct position so it knows where they are and find the time and then record the difference. In this case it's 58 seconds. Uh, let's just uh, delete that one and put it in again so we get something that comes in in minutes. The reason it's showing it in seconds is it doesn't round, so it would show it as almost one minute out in some cases, so I prefer it to show it in seconds over here. So here we can see the time out. Now, it could well be that you'd actually like to see what the time in is on the sheet as well. So what it's doing here is it's going and having a look at the time um, that is being used as for the time in, and it's popping it down into uh, this field here and then it's showing us the difference in this case 5 and 21. Now my difference value, if I was bringing the time in here which I've done from the first sheet, I've gone and looked it up to find out where Anthony was on the first sheet and you can see Anthony's the first one there but Susan is the third one so we've had to be able to go and find Susan and work out that she's the second one there. So uh, it's going and finding that value. Well, if we've already got the time in here, we could actually just do that as a difference value. We could say, okay, well, let's go and have a look. We can minus one from the other. So we're going to take uh, our time in and our time out, those two together. So we'll take away the time in from the time out and that will get us our figure. Now, the problem with just doing a simple minus like that is if we were to spread that down, uh, we'll get a value figure because it's got nothing to successfully minus there. It's working fine here while there's a value in that, but if I don't have a value there, uh, it gets a little bit upset. So to be able to fix that, we actually need to have an if statement placed in here to be able to check to see whether the value is empty or not. So if I copy this back up here, uh, it's showing it as blank, but now when I put in 77, it's going away and checking to see whether there is a value before it shows something so it doesn't show that difference. This one here was no problem because it was using the if statement to go away and check. So that's quite simple. We, uh, When we're bringing our times in, we put them on this sheet, and when we want to do a timeout, we come to a second sheet and we check over here. You just have to be sure as to which sheet you're in. Are you in the time in sheet or the time out sheet? If that's not convenient, if you wanted to have it all in the one place, there's another way of doing it. And I've got that one here where I've combined the two, the time in, which I've got over here, and the time out, which I'm recording over here. So let's pop another in time in here. We'll put in Susan again, and uh, let's do, let's put me in there as well. So we've got our times that have come in, 
uh, 3.35 p.m. as you can see here. Now I want to record some times out. Let's have Maria leave first, 21099. So it's brought up her name, it's given me the time out, and it's calculated the difference for me from 1.42 to 3.34, 1.48, 1 hour and 48 minutes. And you'll notice what I've also done is I've just used some highlighting rules, conditional formatting, so that uh, when Maria's name is there, it shows up over here that she's now gone from this list, because this list, as you can see, is going to get out of order. The different people can leave at different times. So let's get rid of Anthony here. So he's turned red there. So my two names are sitting up here. I've got my time out. That was 3.34 was the in time. 3.35 is the out time. And as you can see, that's just 52 seconds. It doesn't round, which is why if we didn't show the seconds, it would show a zero, which is not quite right, because we can clearly see that there's about a minute showing up in the difference over here. Uh, to get this one, what I've done is I've just taken the, the standard simple form I've got here. What we've got is we've got the number. We've got the VLOOKUP to find the name. We've got the NOW function, which is done by iteration. That's all standard from the other spreadsheets that you've seen. Next, we've gone and recorded the number again. So that's sitting here. Now, the only thing we've got to be careful about with these is we're going to want to make sure that we've set our ENTER to go down rather than across so that when you are working in this column and you press ENTER that it goes down a column rather than going across. The number is same, scanned in or typed in. It's using the same VLOOKUP to go away. So it's going to be a little bit different over here because we're going to have to go and find this person to get their time. So first of all, we grab a time. There it is, right? So that's the time that they've left. And now we need to know what that difference is. Now, the difference is being taken by, first of all, checking to see that there was a time to be recorded. So we've got a time out here. And then we're looking for G3, which is my time out. And we're going to minus a time in. Now, to find the time in, we're using the VLOOKUP command. In this case, in our same spreadsheet, because we're on the same sheet here, we don't need a name at all. So we're coming to look at this set of information here. So we're going to go away and have a look at the area from A3, which is this one in here, all the way down to, well, I'm going down to C889. Uh, so way down the bottom there. And the three here is indicating that it's going to pick the value from column three. And the false means that it will only pick it if it's exactly the same. As long as this number exactly matches uh, one of the numbers over here, then it will go and find the information. So in this case, it's going and having a look at this time, and it's going to have a look at Maria's time over here, the in time, and then it can calculate that figure. Okay, so we're using just the main calculation here. Different ways of doing it. The out function, if you had a look over here, that was going away, and as we look up back to the in time, it's got to go and check the other sheet. This one here, it's all doing it on the one sheet. So depending on what your actual function is, using VLOOKUP is going to be a very effective way of recording both people arriving and leaving and what their time difference is. Now, the only thing that's um, slightly different is how I've got the color coding working in here. To do that, what I did is I highlighted this and I used the control key and I highlighted over here. And then I used conditional formatting. I went to highlight and I went to duplicate Except I'm not actually going to use duplicate, I'm going to use unique. I want to find the unique cells. And in this case, I've said that I want them to be green. And come here. So when they're unique, they're going to be green. Okay, which has meant these ones are green over here. And what I did with these cells here is they're actually just colored red. So this one here, these cells here are also colored red unless they're unique. But because this one is the same as over here, it's going to match up.